Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Word of Faith Family Church. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I'm glad you got here before the crowds did. <laughs> Praise God. Um, Wednesday night service is great to be in the house of the Lord. We're here tonight to lift up the name of Jesus. So I'd just like to open up with Psalms 150. It says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequal greatness. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with the lyre and the harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the string and flutes. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. In this psalm, it tells us 13 times to praise the Lord. Not an option, it's an obligation. Uh, we are to praise the Lord wherever we are, for everything he is. With everything we have, by yes. everyone, everywhere. Amen. Our God is awesome. He's great. He's worthy to be praised. Yes. Jesus, we just praise you tonight, God. We just honor you and bless you, God. It's awesome to be in your house just to lift you up tonight, Lord God. Father, I just thank you for the service tonight, God. I thank you for your anointing on Kim, Lord God. Father, I thank you for your anointing on Pastor and whoever you choose to use tonight, God. I thank you, God. Their words are anointed with your power and your presence, God. Father, we just thank you and bless you for what you're going to do here tonight, God. And we continue to thank you for our new church building, God. And we thank you for a spirit of revival. And Father, we believe you're going to do it. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's stand tonight. And you know what? The little thing we like to do around here, and if you're watching from live stream, we welcome you as well. If you've got anybody in the house, you can just shake hands with them and greet them so you don't feel like you're locked out. But just go around here tonight and just say hi to people as much as you feel comfortable with and uh, greet them and tell them you're happy to see them. And, and then we'll get going.
song says it's not too long and you start to say the name of Jesus and you start to give your praise and your worship, things start to look up. Everything starts to look lighter. Everything starts to look brighter. Praise the Lord. And we can just worship Him in spirit and joy. Amen. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Father. We just magnify you. Thank you, Lord. Well, just turn to your neighbor. Tell him the Lord is coming soon. Amen. Hallelujah. We do have a, Pastor Alan and Carol, Carol Soup will be with us in the middle of May. So that's not too far along. So uh, they're out, last I heard them, they were out in California someplace and traveling and ministering. Uh, they, they, they go all over the world. They go over to Europe. They were over in Korea and ministering. So it's just, uh, we're a rust of heaven. So let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Lord, we just magnify you tonight. Lord, you're good. You're good tonight. We give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise. You never change, Father God. And when things are good and when things aren't good, you're always the same. Whether it's raining or sunny or windy or calm, Lord, you, you are always the same. You never change. It says, with, with whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. So, Lord, we just thank you that uh, we don't have to check in to find out which kind of a mood you're in. Because you're always in a, in a great mood. And we thank you for it, Lord. Thank you that you love us tonight. Yes, Lord. That you love your church. That you love your people, Lord God. So, Father, we just honor you tonight. We thank you. We ask you to bless, bless our congregation, Father God. We know that some of them are, are still coming coming against COVID and the symptoms and everything. We speak healing to their bodies yes. speedily and quickly, Father God. We thank yes, you for working agreement. miracles for our congregation, Lord. We thank you for, for the no, spirit of provision pray. being there, the spirit of supply being there, that uh, each and every need is met, not only their needs, but even their desires, Lord God. We thank you that you're just good to us, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you, you're adding to us. You're causing us to grow and to prosper and to flourish in every area and every way. You're such a good God. You've been so good to us. And, Lord, we, we have the assurance you're not going to change. You're still going to continue to be good to us again and again and again and again. So, Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, nice to have everybody here tonight. Glory to God. So I asked Miss Kathy if she wouldn't mind sharing. She, she, she told me, she said, I already knew you were going to ask me. She, got, she even turned to somebody, don't, the pastor's going to ask me to speak. See, now, uh, people are starting to get in the spirit now. So hallelujah. I, she knew it before I knew it. <laughs> that's <gonna be> good. <laughs> but that's all right. Hallelujah. So, uh, Pastor Kathy, why don't you go ahead and come on up. Yes, I did um, talk to my boss on the way home because I traveled back and forth with her one night. And we were talking, she had, says every Tuesday night to me, she said, oh, so you're speaking tonight. And I said, yes. And, and um, I looked at her and I said, and I passed her, better not ask me to speak tomorrow night. Anyway, she said, he's going to. Anyway, but, so anyway. <laughs> she said, yes. Wow. Anyway, we have some good conversations. She's a, she's a, a She's a good person. She's a, a Catholic lady, and uh, she has a praying mom. And I believe that her mom is is a born again person. And and uh, if it weren't for her mom, and I'm sure some other people praying, Janet has what she calls an emergency measure team. That she's always got something going on, and she has a team that goes to help her out. So anyway, God's been good to her, and I know God's speaking to her. And I have the opportunity to, to minister to her. There was a scripture that came to mind on Sunday morning when we were when we were worshiping, and it came out of nowhere. So I knew that it had to be God. And and I wanted to put up Philippians one six, if you could, in the Amplified uh, version. And this really has nothing to do, but this this scripture has been going over and over in in my heart. Um, since Sunday, and 
last night when I went to bed, I didn't know what I was going to speak on, and that scripture was on my heart. And and I could I I preached a sermon in my in my sleep last night. Uh, <laughs> when I woke up this morning at two, I woke up at two. I was like, there was stuff coming going out all through. But then this morning when I woke up, like I should have got up and wrote it down because it it wasn't there at four o'clock. But anyway. Um, Philippians 1, 6 says, And I am convinced, and I am sure of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ. And that's right up to the time of his return, which is very soon. Developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. That gives us such a great hope that he that began a good work in us, he's never left us. He's never forsaken us. He's never left us by ourselves. That he is continuing and he will continue until he returns to complete, to develop, to perfect that which he has begun in us. And that is that is such a great scripture and it's one that I've known for many years, but it just came to me on Sunday, it was, and then Pastor mentioned it in his message, and I said, God, that's confirmation. That's confirmation that you gave me that scripture this morning. And um, anyway, there's, so of course I said, I said, okay, I can, I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to just have this scripture, and that's what I'm going to do tonight. And uh, anyway, God's good, and, and I did get something else that I believe that is for us um, as you know, I, I love praying, and I love praying in the Holy Ghost. And since I've been filled with the Holy Ghost, there's nothing like the Holy Ghost. Um, some people I know don't use it all the time. I don't know how they don't. Uh, I've Since I got filled, it just flows out of me all the time. Like, I, I there wouldn't be half a day that I could, like, and sometimes probably more that I, I pray in tongues. Like this afternoon, I found myself praying in tongues because I was getting a little bit <laughs> nervous about tonight. <laughs> but you know what? God's got something for yeah. us. And yeah. um, whether it's long or whether it's short, it's still, I believe it's from God. And I know I've spoken about this before, but it's talking about he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, we edify or we improve ourselves. And that's from 1 Corinthians 14, 4. And there's a fire of God that isn't on the inside of us. And when you speak in tongues, I I don't know how that fire does not erupt in each person that speaks in tongues. And like I, I'm in my spirit tonight, I am just there's a flame that's burning <laughs> and it's burn. burning. Yes. And and I I love the Holy Ghost. Yes. I, I love the Holy Ghost. I love praying in tongues. And if it weren't for that, I don't know, you know, where I would really be without it. So, the word edify in the dictionary talks about, and there's a kindling. One of the definitions for it is to kindle. To kindle. What does kindle mean? It means... To kindle a fire is to ignite. <laughs> to ignite a fire. Yes. So when you speak in tongues, when we pray in tongues, there's a fire. And it is ignited within us. Yes. Right? It is ignited. And it is, when you have a fire, an actual fire, you throw wood on that fire, right? Mm -hmm. As it burns down, and then it, the flames, they flow up, they fire up again, right? So when we when we pray in tongues, that's what happens. It just it just kindles in us, right? And if we don't pray in tongues for even a few hours, all we have to do is just do pray in tongues and that kindles again and it just fires up. Yes. Right? Amen. 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 And we need to keep it burning. And the way to keep it burning is to pray and in tongues because that edifies us that builds us up it burns within us there's a, and it kindles um, it ignites the fire of God in us it ignites that fire and um, we have to keep burning hot
because we need to be burning hot in these last days. Yes. And if we're not burning on fire and hot for God, then you don't stay the same, right? Come you're on. either burning hot or you're going left. You're getting less. Yeah, right. So you burn hot for God. Yes. And there's people out there that need us to be burning, yeah. burning, yes. burning hot. And um, he doesn't like lukewarm, right? And he, um, there's a passage in Revelation that says, Revelation 3, 15 and 16, in the Amplified says, You are neither cold or hot. Would you were cold or hot. So, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. There you go. Yes. So, I always thought that maybe lukewarm would be better than being cold, right? <laughs> But that's not so. God says that it's better to be cold than to be lukewarm. Because if you have become lukewarm, then something has died. Something you have left, something undone. Or there is something within you that has, has died, has um, gone oh, by the wayside. You're not doing what we're supposed to be doing if we are lukewarm. And it says that he would spew us out of, his, out of his mouth. And I don't want to be spewing out of no, God's sir. mouth. No. I all want, in. That's right, all in. That, and that word, those words I've heard a lot this week too. Yes. All in. We have to be all in. Yes. And uh, there's, no, there's no turning back. We no, have sir. to be all in. We have nothing to go back to. And uh, God is expecting us all in. How did something become lukewarm? It once had heat applied to it, but that heat was removed, and thus it's lost its fire, right? And that's what's happened to a lot of the church today, even the Pentecostal people. The heat was removed, and we've become lukewarm. We've lost the fire that God has placed. When we receive the Holy Ghost, when, even when we're born again, there's a fire of God that is placed on the inside of us. And, and with the Holy Ghost, if we if we don't pray in tongues and we don't use what God has given to us, then we become lukewarm. Yes. We do. And the fire is gone out. And I know at my house, when my pellet stove goes out, it's cold. Yep. Right? So, especially in the dead of winter. Yeah. So we don't want to be cold. We want to be burning hot for God. Says he would rather that one be spiritually cold and never have had the fire of God than to be lukewarm. Right? So at one point they had a measure of God, but it's been cut off, and we don't want to be cut off. He that speaks in an unknown tongue, he will keep the fire of God moving in your in our lives. We'll keep it moving by edified by speaking in tongues, by praying in tongues, and there's that inner fire that will burn hot for God. You'll be so hot, and it says that in these last days that people will see how hot we are, how on fire we are for God. They will see God in us, and, and they will run. They'll run to, the, to, to meet God, Amen. and that's what we're supposed to be, right? Yes. Second Timothy 1.6 says, yes, Stir up the gift. Are we stirring up the gift that God has placed within us? Um, in the Amplified it says, I would remind you. So he, he's not just, he's reminding us. And we need to be reminded. It says, stir up. Rekindle those embers of, of Fan the flame. Keep burning. The gracious gift of God, that inner fire that is in you. Right? So we need to stir up. God's not going to stir us up. We have to stir ourselves up. We stir ourselves up. How do you keep the fire of God, the gift of God, stirred up? By speaking in tongues. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, you edify or you kindle yourself. And it's easy to let that slip. But as the days approach as the end times approach. We need to be praying more in the Holy Ghost. We need it. We need it. The world needs it. Our friends need it. Our family needs it. And 
And it, I can't put a, 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 enough emphasis on the, the speaking in tongues. He that speaks in an unknown tongue kindles himself in the mystery, in the ministry that God has called us to. And every one of us has a ministry. So how do we find out what that ministry is? One way, we kindle ourselves by praying in tongues and finding out what God has. He will reveal to you what he has for you. And you keep yourself hot. And God will lead you in the direction that he has called you to. A man who takes time to speak in tongues, you won't become unfaithful to what God's called you to. If you're speaking in tongues and you're spending time with the Lord and in the word, you're going to know and you're not going to become unfaithful in what he's called you to do. You're not going to let it slip. You're not going to let it go. You won't become bored. There, there's no boredom in the Holy Ghost. And you won't become bored with your ministry. And you won't start wandering off. I wonder how many times why people have wandered off and away from their ministries and, and the enemy has got in there because they, they aren't praying in tongues. They're not spending time with the Lord in, in word and in prayer. We won't wander away from that office that he's called us to and something and get into danger. Because once we're, when you're out of that place where God has called us to, there's danger. You're, you're not covered. You're, there's a danger place there, and you're not, and you're not guarded against it if we're, if we're wandering. A believer who speaks in tongues keeps himself hot in serving in the ministry. So for anybody, and we all have ministry, whether it's helps ministry, whether whatever ministry, even to be in any ministry, at the door, in the worship, in the sound booths, in the worship team, our pastor, anybody, we have to, um, there is a ministry for us, and we have to keep where God has called us in the local church. And we yes. don't become bored and unfaithful when we're, when we're doing that. And we'll be an example. How many times that you know, see people that are on fire for God, and how, what does that do to you? How does that speak to you? It, it makes you, well, with me, I get excited. When I see somebody that's on fire, burning hot for God, that's what I want, yeah. right? Yeah. That's, what, that's what we want, and that's what we need. And so when we're doing that, then people will see that. And it's people, our, our own uh, sisters and brothers will see that. They'll see, see how God is using you and working in your life. Paul uh, wrote in Romans 12, 11, and he said, never lay in zeal and in earnest endeavor. So are we earnestly endeavoring to do what God has called us to do and to, to pray in tongues and to be a glow? Burning with the Spirit. Being and burning with the Spirit, serving the Lord. So never lag in zeal and in earnest endeavor, be a glow and burning with the Spirit of God and serving Him, right? Amen? Amen. Pleases God when we serve Him and we're a glow and we're hot. Just think of how how pleased He is when we're when we're a glow and hot for Him. And when Amen. we're loving Him and serving Him and He is our everything. He's all that we need. He's all that we need. Yes. Yes. And when we have Him and when we're doing what he wants us to do and, and loving him, everything's going to fall into place. Everything. Our finances, our ministries, Amen. our families, everything is going to fall into place. Amen. Speaking in other tongues will keep a man hot in every arena of his life. Right? Are you getting hot? Are you getting hot? It keeps them ignited for the purposes and plans of God. Amen? God has provided for us the flow. And we talk about the flow, getting in the flow. And the flow freely and easily. How easy and how free is it when you're in the flow of the Holy Ghost, right? It's easy. Now, sometimes we don't always think it is, but it's easy. It is easy when we get in where we're supposed to be and doing and listening 
and knowing what he wants us to do. Yes. Speaking in tongues plays a vital role in maintaining yes. your glow. Yes. Right? We want to glow. We want to be hot. Yeah. Also, the word kindle, and another definition for it is to bring forth young. Isaiah 66, 8. Wow. Who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall a land be born in a day? Or shall a nation be brought forth in a moment? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she brought forth her children. Wow. So, Kindle, that's another definition, is to bring forth young. So how do we bring forth young? We see that through the help of the Holy Spirit, we can speak divine utterances that plays a role in bringing forth spiritual children. Wow. Right? So praying in tongues, who would have thought that praying in tongues would bring forth spiritual children? Right? Speaking in tongues plays a role with spiritual babies. Now, um, prayer doesn't save people. Jesus has already saved, he's already done had the, the saving work, right? And as we cooperate and as we work with the Holy Spirit and the power of God, that man can come unto salvation a lot easier. Does that make sense to people? Yeah. That God's already done the saving, but as we flow and as we pray in tongues, and that makes it easy for those people to come to the Lord. And that, therefore, provides spiritual babies. And that's what, that's what it's all about, is to produce babies for, for the kingdom of God in these last days. And there's a lot of people out there that need to be brought into the kingdom of God. Building your spirit. Another definition is build himself. We build ourselves up in praying in tongues. Smith Wigglesworth said, I'm a thousand times bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. He was saying that his spirit was so much larger than his body. Is our spirit so much larger than our body? His life showed the fruit of that enlargement by all the miracles, the healings, works that he did, everything that it showed that the fruit of what, how big he was on the inside. Yes. Speaking in tongues plays a vital role in building a man's spirit. It builds us up. It builds our spirits. It enlarges us in an enlarged capacity for God's power and ability. So when we're praying in tongues, then that enables a greater capacity within us for the power and ability of God to flow through us. You can hear the largeness of a man's spirit by the way he talks and how he walks with God. His words sound different. We sound different if we're walking with God and praying in tongues. His words are power and revelation. And they will seem to strike a chord in people. Mm. Isn't that what we want? We want the Spirit of God to be so yes. large in us that people see Him through us. Absolutely. Just yeah. by entering a room that they see Jesus and they yes. know that He is here. Mm -hmm. his, his words will land in with, with you with such force and power. And they won't leave you in the same place that you, you were found in. Amen. Right? Amen. Speaking in tongues does a lot of things. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've only mentioned a few things, and there's so many other things that it does. He that speaks in an unknown tongue builds himself. And it takes longer to build something than it does to tear it down. It takes more effort to build. It's a longer process. But the results are so worth, worthwhile. 
You know what? It doesn't happen overnight that we become with what God wants us to be. Even praying in tongues, right? It's a lifestyle. It's a progress. It's a process. But we want it. And if we're hot and burning for God, well, he will. He enables us to do that. He gives it to us. He doesn't hold anything back from us. Psalms 127, 1. Amen. God gives us a warning. A warning. It says, except the Lord build the house, lay that labor in vain. A labor in vain that build it. And the house doesn't refer to our house. It refers to a man's spirit. It refers to a man's life. It refers to your purpose, your ministry. He warns us that it must be his ability. Not by our mental ability, our physical ability, our educational ability, but by our God-given spiritual ability. If we don't let God build, build us, then we're, we, we're nothing. Right? Psalms 127 one says, The house got built, but it was built by vain labor. Therefore, it's a work done in vain. It will never produce all of the fruit that it's supposed to produce. It was built apart from the Lord. It was man's mental and physical ability that built it, not God. Wow. And we only want God to build our lives. Yes. That's a revelation right there. Amen. When building any area of our lives, we must employ the supernatural. Yes. And when we take time to speak in tongues, we are employing the supernatural. Yes. Right? It comes on the scene. Right? Wow. Supernatural. And that's God. I think I spoke one other night about the supernatural prayer life and how we're supernatural. God made us to be supernatural. He's supernatural and he made us to be the same as him. And there's nothing less than the supernatural. We need to be supernatural people and to employ it. A divine help. Cooperating with our divine helper. Yes, new creatures. We are tapping into the thoughts and plans of God when we're when we're praying in tongues. Yes, because it's supernatural, and we're and uh, He's giving us plans. He's downloading stuff into us when when we're when we're tap, when we are praying in tongues. Yes, we're utilizing His almightiness when we're doing that. What a building it will become. What a building you will become. What a building I will become. When we allow God to to do his work in us. What a place of glory. What a place of honor and power for our Father to flow through us. Right? He has to flow through us. Amen. The building of a man's spirit, his life, his ministry, his purpose, is not done by human. It's not human, it's not natural might, it's not our might, but it's by His Spirit. Except the Lord, right? Its ability and power proceeds from God. It comes from Him. We have, there's nothing in us, it's all Him, right? It's all about Him. And we're in it because of Him. God has given us this divine helper. He's such a, the Holy Ghost is such a helper. He, he helps us in every, if you give him, he, he'll help you in anything that you need help in. Yes, he will. He will ensure our success in the building process, and we will utilize his help as we speak forth the utterances that he gives us in other tongues. She, um, this is from Nancy Dufresne's book, and she said, she said, I can only build areas successfully as I do them by the Spirit. Not because she's a pastor or a prophet or a minister. She does it by the, it's because of the Spirit of God that she does them. And as, as we know, even from Sundays, like Pastor tells us to go, 
told me pray in the afternoon. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Why? What benefit does that help? It does help. Yeah, and as Pastor would, uh, would tell us that I'm sure he spends many hours praying before services. And she spends many times, many hours praying. She said, how can I edify people if, if I'm not edified? If she's not built up. If she's not hearing from the Holy Spirit. You know, like it's, it's all true. She said, I study God's word daily as a part of my lifestyle and by speaking in other tongues. And she said, I can draw the best truths from the word out of my spirit by doing that. So that in itself is a big thing, to be able to pray in tongues so that you can edify somebody else. You can help other people. You don't have to be behind this pulpit. You can help people at the door. You can help people out there in the parking lot. And by speak, you know, praying in tongues, we all are ministers. God has given us all a ministry of some sort. And, and every one of us need to use praying in tongues so that we can help somebody else. Yes, yes. So she said, I spend a few hours prior to the service hooking my tongue up to my spirit. <laughs> right? <laughs> then when I minister to the people, I minister out of my spirit. And this is, this is easy. And we all, I'm sure, know that it's not easy to minister out of our spirits. Like, it's a learning process. It takes time, and and as we are open and ask the Lord to help us, He provides. He does. He helps us. Amen. She said she she ministers out of her spirit, not out of her head. And how often have we heard that that we don't minister out of our head? We minister out of our spirits. We reach deep down into our spirits. Have you tried ever doing that? It's not easy, is it? But God, it's there. It's yes. just we have to. We have. It's a learning process, and God is so faithful. Yes, yes. And we won't fall short when we minister out of our spirits and not of our our, our own ability. Yes. Speaking in tongues is the door to the supernatural. It's a spiritual action action that ushers us into operating in the gifts of the spirit. Amen, right? So if, if we're not praying in tongues at all, then, um, then the ministry of the gifts of the Spirit, they help so that we can minister by the gifts. We aren't the ones who decide how and when the Spirit moves. They flow only by the Spirit of God. They don't flow because we decide that we think they should flow. But through speaking in other tongues, we make our spirits sensitive yes. to the Holy Ghost. Yes. And by that, we put ourselves in a position to perceive what he wants to manifest in our services and in our lives, yes. our, our everyday lives. First Corinthians 12, there's, I'm not going to read that, but it, there is a scripture there. First Corinthians 12, 7 to 10. Uh, she gives with that. Those who take time to speak in other tongues will have the gifts of the Spirit flowing in their daily lives. Another reason why we should pray in tongues. It's exciting when the Spirit, when you flow in the Spirit, when you flow in the gifts. Right? And people need them. People need that ministry. We need that ministry. John 16, 13 tells us that the Spirit of God will show us things to come. And we need to know things to come, right? I, I always thought it was so interesting, all these people that know things, the prophets that know things that are coming down, that they hear from God, and they know things. But, this, but the Spirit can show us. He can show you, He can show me things to come. So praying in tongues, that helps with that. She said, I've had many wonderful experiences with, with God in prayer as a result in speaking in tongues. How often when you're speaking in tongues in prayer, either here or at home, 
that you can get off and you can get into places, yeah, right? Yes. Experiences with the spirit and the spirit can talk to you and, and you talk to, to him. It's, it's, it's wonderful and we, we need to use it more often and get into places that we've never been. Yes. Tragedies and people's lives have been averted because of praying in tongues. Um, she tells a story, and I think I've told this story before here, but about the babies that life was spared. She was going to bed one night, and uh, it, she was felt impressed by the Spirit of God to pray. And while well, she said she was, she always prayed as she went to bed. But she said this one night, she said I was quietly laying, speaking in tongues, and she said the Lord shows her a lot of stuff, and He showed her a one-year-old baby boy that came what she could literally see and he was you know how a, a one-year-old walks they're very unsteady on their feet and he had wandered out into the driveway of this place that she saw and he stopped behind a silver truck she said while he was standing there she saw a man come out of a house get into the truck and he backed up over the door the baby he didn't know the baby was there she said when i saw that she, did, she said, I didn't pray in tongues. She said, what I did was I bowed the spirit of death from off that child in Jesus' name. And she said, I loosed the power of God and the angels to protect him. Because it does no good when we're, we're praying in tongues, um, that part of it. Like she said, you have to speak. And so that's what she spoke. And that's all she spoke. And she said, then she continued to pray in tongues afterwards until she felt a release by the spirit of God. And she said, when God showed me that child being run over, she said, he didn't just show it to me so that I would see it. He showed it so that I would exercise my authority over it and get it changed. And we have authority over the enemy. And we can abort situations. We can abort accidents. We can abort a lot of things. And... By praying in tongues, we see um, we see stuff. God shows us things too, because you're in the spirit. He's showing us things. We are co-laborers with God, and God's part was to supply the power and authority. Right? He gave us the power and authority, and our part is to exercise that power. If we don't exercise our authority over the devil, it won't get exercised. We have to do it. God doesn't do it. God's already done what he's going to do. He's given us the power and authority to exercise our authority over the enemy. And he allows what we allow. If we allow things to happen, God allows it. Because he, he needs us. He's given us that authority. What he permits, or what we permit, God permits. So some Christians were waiting on God to do something when he's already done it. God showed her that that child being run over by a truck so she could exercise her authority. I think I'm going backwards here, aren't I? Yes. No, okay. When we're speaking in other tongues, we're talking to God, not the devil. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. The devil doesn't understand one word you're saying. That's right. For I'm speaking God talk. Mm -hmm. It's a language that's between him and I. We don't deal with the devil by speaking in tongues. And it took me a long time to learn that. Um, I, I guess I used to think that by speaking in tongues, uh, you, you, could, you were speaking to the devil. But that's not so. No. We deal with him through our authority, through exercising that authority over him. Through speaking in tongues, my spirit was sensitive in talking about that child. So she was... Just by laying down that night and speaking in tongues, her spirit became sensitive to the Holy Spirit so that he could use her and show her this child and that the devil planned to harm that child. About four months later, she was in a, a service in her midweek service and she said that she was telling the congregation about this situation and what had happened. And she said a lady stood up and said, may I say something? And this lady didn't normally go to her church. She was um, 
somebody that went, she must have been working in this area where this, where Nancy's church was. And through the week, it was too far for her to go home to her church service, so she used to go to Nancy's church service, and then she was home for Sundays. She said, I'm a member of that church, and she said, I take care of my pastor's grandchildren. And she said, I was with them a few weeks ago when that accident, and all the staff from the church were at this home for a, a Christmas party. And the pastor's one-year-old grandson got out of the house without anybody seeing him, and he walked out into the driveway behind the silver truck. The staff member was leaving, and he didn't know that the child had got out of the house and didn't see him behind that truck and got into the truck. And he backed up over the child, then he knew that he had hit something, so he, he ran back over him, like he had backed up over him, then he drove back over him because he didn't know what he had hit, and I, he probably wasn't thinking it was a child, right? Mm -hmm. So when he got out of the truck, the child was laying on the ground and had the tire marks all over his ab abdomen and his legs, right? Mm -hmm. But that child got up and ran in the house and was showing the people the, the tire marks all over his wow. body. <laughs> so that praying, she said that little boy was saved, no, and nothing, nothing hurt. He was, he was saved. Wow. So great is the power of God yes, to keep and protect. Yes. And one other story she tells about um, how she was praying one night again as she was going to bed. So from, from that, I, I think that it's very important that we pray as we go to bed at night yes. while we're laying, you know, waiting. Because God can, we're receptive to, to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit knows that we're, we're praying and he can show us things and it can avert situations, it can avert, avert tra tragedies. She said as she was laying on her pillow, um, she, uh, I'm sort of lost here. Going the wrong way. Two vehicles collide. And one vehicle hitting the other hit the driver's side. And she said, when she saw that, she told Satan, take your hands off that situation. I bind the spirit of death, and I loose the power of God and the angels to be around that situation. She said, I took a few more minutes to pray. I mean, that's all she said. That's all she said. She said, I bind Satan. You take your hands off of that situation. I bind the spirit of death, and I'd lose the power of God and the angels to protect that situation. Yep. She said she continued to pray in tongues a few more minutes, and she said felt there was nothing else that she needed to do. She said, I went off to sleep. And two weeks later, she received a phone call from uh, an acquaintance that had been in this accident, and there had been a drunk driver that had hit this, this guy, she didn't say it was a guy or a woman, hit that person and the top of the car flew up so he hit that car so hard that the, the top was either cut off or flew off or whatever and when the emergency team arrived they brought out a body bag because the accident was so it was so bad that they couldn't imagine that anybody had had survived that accident and all he had was a few cuts in, on his body they had to read, like, it took them a while to remove him. But she said, I believe in the power of God that delivers and rescues from the enemy's yes, plans. Yes, so, how important is praying in tongues? And I mean, there's stories upon stories that people tell. I mean, uh, Candace Hankin told so many stories. And, and these men, Smith Wigglesworth, how they, the situations were averted because they prayed in tongues. They prayed so that God could use them to to keep somebody from dying, somebody from um, any any situation. Mm. Speaking in tongues is a door to the supernatural, and the more we speak in tongues, the more supernatural <coughs> we become. The more super supernatural will flow in our lives. We build a greater capacity for the supernatural to flow the more we pray in tongues. 
So that's, um, I guess, there's another little bit here. It says, which, um, praying in tongues, we can get into a flow in our services, right? It caters either to the flow of the Spirit or um, it will, how does she put it? It caters to the moving of the Spirit and we carry the order in our lives that caters. So by praying in tongues, that we can cater to the flow of the Spirit. Yeah. It, it helps in our services. It helps um, that we do that. We don't want so much the order that it's pushed out, but we want the Spirit of God to move in our services. And it provides a platform by praying in tongues for the Spirit of God to move in our service, in our lives, in a church service. We That can either um, confine or limit how the Spirit of God will move. We're pushing. We're pulling on the plan. If we're we're praying in tongues, we come prepared and we and we can push and we can pull on what God's doing. And that's another interesting thing that I I I love to do is just to pull and to, to push on the plan of God that's going on in the service. And you can do that. You can get in that place and you can pull. You can pull on a pastor when, and the anointing from him. And and how many times have we seen how that what happens when we do that? Yes. And that's because we've prayed in tongues. We've come prepared for our services, and and um, what God wants to do in and through sitting in, in, even in our seats yeah. and pulling on what God has given pastor. Yes. Amen. The Pharisees had a, a order to their services, right? Yes. And they forbade God to move in their services. But we want God to move in our services. Yes. We want to pull yes, on the plan yes. and, and the purposes of God for our services. Yes. They thought Jesus was intruding, but we want Jesus to intrude in yes, our sir. services, right? We want him to upset the order of things. We yes. want him here. And, yes. and as he does that, as we pray and, and allow him to move, we're going to, like how many times have we been told what we're going to see and what we're going to experience and what's going to happen? Yeah. And the more we get into that flow and, and pull and go with the flow, go with the spirit, and it's by praying in tongues. Oh, I'll, I'll, it's by praying in tongues. Wow. Just being sensitive to the spirit of God. That puts us in a whole different place. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I think I'm going to finish with that. But um, God, God is good, and um, I, I love, I love the flow. I love the Spirit of God. I love being on fire. I love the fire of God burning in us, and um, that's what He wants. And, and he can, He can move. We don't want to hinder the Spirit of God. We don't want to be a hindrance to the things of God in these last days because he wants to move. He wants to move even in a greater way than what we even know how he wants to move. He, he wants to move. He doesn't want to be hindered. And God is good. I love him tonight. I worship him. I praise you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you that you're so good and you give us so much, oh God. We thank you for your presence in this place, oh God. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Anybody need an envelope? As we pray in tongues, and, and like the praying in tongues has got so much with even in our finances, right? Our finances and how God provides. Um, it's everything is all connected, and uh, the Spirit of God and and uh, how He provides for us. God's been good through COVID. He's been good through everything that's happened. He's provided for for His people. We have not gone without. And uh, he will continue to provide for us. He has a plan and he has a way for us. And he is not going to leave us no. without. I don't think anybody needs an envelope. Anyway, we're going to thank the Lord for our offering. Thank you, Father, for your, your presence. We thank you, God, you provide. 
you're our provision, you're our comforter, you're our keeper, you're our lover. Oh God, we just thank you. We thank you, God, that you give so that we can give again. Lord, but that your kingdom will be advanced and many will come to the knowledge and saving grace of you. And God, we praise you tonight. We thank you for all that you provide for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we have uh, Sunday morning, Sunday evening. So pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost this week. Just a reminder. Just get, get in prayer and see what God See what God will do. Even uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night. Then we have Wednesday, I, I think, blessing night next Friday night. Um, war room next Friday, too. Uh, but not this Friday, but the next Friday. So be blessed. God calls us blessed. We're, uh, and I call you blessed. Uh, drive safely. And we'll see you back on fire in, on Sunday. Amen. Amen. Let the fire burn in you. Don't put it. Don't put it out. Don't let it be pushed down. Let it. Let it burn. Yes. Amen. Awesome.